Hello everyone and welcome back to Nightmares of Nature. As always, I'm your host Mr. G. Today, we're talking about the lion second in command, the laughing... whatever they are, hyenas. Now, at first glance, hyenas do resemble canines. However, they are not canines, they are part of their own family. In fact, their family is more closely related to cats than it is to canines. So, yeah, there's that. Appearances can be deceiving in nature. Just, uh, you wait. I have an entire episode planned about mimicry where we see just how fully uh, nature can fool you sometimes. Now, within the hyena family, there are four main species that I'll be talking about. Let's start with the most famous and the largest, the spotted hyena, Krakuda Krakuda. These guys got their name because, well, take a guess. Now, contrary to popular belief, the spotted hyena is not a scavenger. Well, like most predators, it will scavenge if it has the opportunity, but most of a hyena's diet is based on stuff that it actually killed itself. In fact, lions actually steal more from hyenas than hyenas do from lions, so there's that. In fact, packs of hyenas can be just as deadly as a pride of lions. Although interestingly enough, despite not being true scavengers, they are able to digest bone, meaning that hyenas leave very little behind of their kills. Much like lions or wolves, hyenas live in packs and are pack hunters. Although interestingly enough, unlike lions and wolves, which have an alpha male, hyenas are actually matriarchal, which means they're led by the females. In fact, they're so female dominated that even the highest ranking male is below the lowest ranking female. In fact, it kind of sucks to be a male hyena, since when you come of age, you get kicked out of the pride in order to prevent inbreeding. So there's that. But a female hyena's life isn't all that better either, especially when they give birth. Without getting into too much detail, let's just say humans have to give their babies out of a hole, and uh, hyenas have to squeeze their baby out of a tube. Yes, female hyenas have one of those. <sighs> yeah, nature can be weird sometimes. Alright, to apologize, here's a picture of baby hyenas. Look at the little babies! Oh, they're so adorable! Oh, look at them! Now, the most famous aspect about the hyena is their famous laugh. It is a very uncanny resemblance to a human laugh. Now, contrary to popular belief, this laugh is not their main vocalization. They do make typical mammalian carnivore noises. This laugh is mostly used when they're excited or nervous about something. But, uh, it's pretty easy to tell why it became the most famous noise, considering that it's definitely the creepiest. I mean, how would you feel if you came across a weird dog-like creature, and then it started laughing? That, that just does not sound right. The other most famous aspect about hyenas is their relationship with the lion. You see, hyenas and lions in the areas where, they in, where their ranges interlock, they have a pretty bad rivalry. Although, considering that a lion could easily kill a hyena, it's pretty one-sided, and hyenas generally try to avoid conflict with lions, even if it's only one of them. So yeah, spotted hyena. Next, we got the striped hyena. Hyena hyena. That's its actual name. Now, unlike its spotted cousin, the striped hyena actually is mostly scavengerous. It does make its own kills from time to time, since very few animals are true pure scavengers. But overall, it scavenges most of its food, and it'll even dig in trash cans for meat. Now, the striped hyena is also the most uh, global of the hyenas. While the other three species are only found in Africa, the striped hyena can be found as far east as India. Yeah, that's basically all I have to say about these guys. Next, we got the brown hyena. Parahyena brunea. They exist. Finally, we got the aardwolf. Now, despite their resemblances to the striped hyena, they actually have their own unique dietary system. You see, the aardwolf is actually an insectivore. They basically spend all their time feeding by following trails of termites and licking them up with their tongues. They're also very skittish animals that hate confrontation. So whenever another animal appears, they prefer to flee than to fight. Now that I got that out of the way, let's look at the cards. Okay, the hyena cards represent probably my biggest problem with Nightmares of Nature specifically. This isn't really a problem with the other series as much, but Nightmares of Nature has a very, very, very bad problem with one aspect. Fear-mongering. 
Basically, for some Nightmares of Nature cards, they act like whatever animal they're talking about is an evil species. Yeah, they're, they're, they're the most uh, evil things ever. Frightening. Ooh, yeah, yeah. And I don't like that. I don't like how they're fear-mongering. Spotted hyenas are just another carnivore. There's nothing that bad about them. And I hate how it calls them greedy scavengers. I, in, in fact, in general, it always a annoys me whenever people treat scavengers as, as if they're the scum of the animal kingdom. Newsflash, buddy. If out scavengers, then the entire place would just be filled with dead bodies. You should be grateful for them. Why are scavengers all of a sudden these stupid animals that shouldn't exist? So yeah, because of blatant fear-mongering, I refuse to grade this card. And the striped hyena isn't much better. They took a mostly scavengerous animal, and they still found a way to fearmonger it by writing a story on the back where it kills a man. Why not? Why not? <sighs> These two are some of the worst cards so far for their blatant fearmongering. And unfortunately, the fearmongering doesn't stop there. You see, hyenas have pretty bad reputations of humans. Uh, mostly because of the fact they're seen as inferior to lions. So they're seen as the greedy scavengers while the lions are the cool predators. Ooh. Whenever hyenas appear in media, they're just going to be compared to lions and basically go, Haha, ha, hyenas are so lame compared to lions. Oh, and don't forget my favorite uh, cliche ever, which I just went on a big rant about. Betraying every scavenger animal as if they're the scum of the animal kingdom. Yeah, scavengers suck. Hey kids, you should hate vultures, hyenas, and all those guys. Because they eat things that are already dead. They're just a bunch of massive cowards. You should only, uh, you should only like the cool animals like lions. They actually kill their prey. I seriously hate that cliche so much. Why does media always portray scavengers as the worst kind of animals possible? It genuinely drives me up the wall. Okay, let's look at some more positive sides. Hyenas are pretty reoccurring in pop culture, mostly spotted and striped. Unfortunately for spotted hyenas, they're mostly just used to show how lame they are compared to lions. Most famously, there was the Lion King, where they were the secondary antagonists. Striped hyenas fare a bit better, though. In the classic German horror film, uh, striped hyenas were used as stand-ins for wolves. I guess people back then were just easier to fool or something. The brown hyena and hard wolf don't really fare that much better in pop culture. They barely appear. In fact, off the top of my head, I can only think of one appearance for both of them. For the brown hyena, it was the inspiration for the Pokemon Mighty Yenna. And for the Ardwolves, I guess they appeared in the Lion King spin-off, The Lion Guard. In captivity, hyenas are pretty common. Once again, they're mostly spotted and striped. So, yeah. Please treat hyenas better and stop betraying them as the stupid animals who are secondary to lions in every single respect of life. Well, that's all for this episode of Nightmares of Nature. Next time, we'll look at some mammals that really need anger management. Bye! Uh huh. We finally found him. The key to our victory. Think you can handle this job? Oh, don't worry. I'll give him an offer he can't resist. <laughs>